Greetings. Greetings to all of those across these United States by Zoom and to millions tuned in around the world. Well, that may be a bit of a stretch for our gathering today, but we do wor love words like that. Go into all the world, Jesus said. I think we stand today on the threshold of one of the greatest opportunities of our lifetime. I've been at this now for over 50 years, and I get up every morning, and I work on a vision for the next 50 years. Now, you may say, Landon, look, you're not going to be around here in 50 years. And of course, you're probably right, but you'll have to admit, it's a lot better for me to get up working on this than it would be for me to get up and say, oh me, I'm about to croak. We've been through a hellish year, haven't we? Few things have ever touched the world in a way this pandemic has. And here in this country, we've lost nearly 600,000 of our own loved ones. And we've suffered as churches all across the United States. On Sunday morning, our churches have been empty and dark. We've never seen that. We've been knocked down, but we haven't been knocked out. We're still here, sticking our little heads up above this pan pandemic and saying, where do we go from here? Think of how refreshing a question that is. Where do we go now? That speaks of a great adventure. For years, I've had up on the wall of my office an old frame that's chipped and battered and beat up that holds the words in fading colors, but really beautiful script. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. I love that word, nevertheless. Yes, we've been through a pandemic, but nevertheless, we've been through wars, but we've always said, but nevertheless, we've been through deep spiritual struggles, but we always say, nevertheless, we look for a new heavens and a new earth. These are the words that they carry us through dark times, failures, suffering, illness, criticisms, and loss. They've carried us through in churches of Christ over the past many years. We fought, we've divided, we've struggled, and some have even had some moments when they thought that a, an Ananias and Sapphira moment might be in order for those obnoxious brethren. But so far, we've not said that. We've said, nope, that's not a good idea. And we haven't just come through our own struggles. Religion itself, we're seeing powerful challenges today from those who say religion is a relic of the past, that the world has passed by its nonsensical doctrines, that, that it belongs in a museum somewhere. And then to add to that, religion has been knocked down with personal and institutional scandals known worldwide. And we're seeing church attendance drop below 50% for the first time in these United States. We're watching our own children turn away from our churches in record numbers. And churches, for the most part, have failed to attract those who are outside its walls. But you know, our faith is seen worse. At the very beginning, the disciples stood by and watched their beloved Jesus nailed to a cross, a cross that was raised against threatening and darkened skies, and the disciples went home. Was it over? Was it over? Was the dream of a new heavens and a new earth, was it smashed in pieces forever? That would have been true had it not been 
for these words. He is not here. He is risen. Yes, some, pre some predict the demise of our faith. They say it's done, it's over, it's dead. But I sense a stirring, a new stirring from any ashes that may be there. I hear a voice at first faint that says, we worship a God who brings life to the dead, who brings into existence things that never were. Christ rises he always rises, and we rise. We always march toward the light. I think we're a little bit like the birds that outside my window in the morning, sensing the dawn, sing while it is yet dark. Our fellowship is known for a fellowship that sings. We sing that old hymn, we're marching on the upward way, New heights we're gaining every day. And so I've chosen the metaphor of a new frontier to describe what I think should be our work for the next 50 years. We need a new spirit. We need to travel to a new place. We need a more hopeful place from which to be who we are. You know, those of old who set out for a new frontier they could only take with them what they could put on their horse or in a covered wagon. And I think this is a good way for us to think about what's happening to us now. I think we're in a period in which we're trying to work out what's most important to our faith, what's really essential, what must be left behind. And I know that that's painful sometimes, because it involves things we've loved, things we've cherished, things we've become familiar with. We've just done it this way for so long. But we'll have to admit that some of it is just clutter. It's clutter that has driven our own young people away. It's clutter that has caused the world to look somewhere else for words of life. And I think it's right for us to examine religion. It's right for us to examine our own religion and to examine it with the same passion Jesus examined the religion of his day. Think of what he cast aside. Think of what he said we must let go of. Just think of what he threw out. He had to in order to get to the commandment of love. And as Jesus instructed, I think we must be willing to leave behind some insufferable burdens that we have placed on the backs of human beings. And we must leave behind those, those condemnations and judgments that Jesus said could have no part of his mission. And we must leave behind any demand that everyone think exactly like we think or talk exactly as we talk or even look exactly as we look. It's that kind of thinking that has driven the young away. It's that kind of thinking that causes the world to look elsewhere. You see, we must resist a sectarian Jesus a Jesus that becomes a sectarian savior. And we must be careful not to let our ecclesiology, our churchology get ahead of our Christology. We must never allow ourselves to become a church of the church. Rather, we must be a church of Christ. And we must look to Jesus for what's really important and for what we must take to a new frontier. For example, he told us, love one another because that's the way the world will recognize you as my disciples. He said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a joy, a joy that the world cannot take away. He said, I want you to be peacemakers 
in a world that is so divided politically and religiously and socially. And he said, I want you to treat others. I want you to treat all others. Let me repeat, to treat others, all others, as you would like to be treated yourself. These are ideas that are pure gold, and they are transportable. We can take them everywhere we go. We can take them to a new frontier. So let's become a people who's known for these things above all else. Only then can we reverse the way faith is going right now. Only then can we recover the passion to work for a new heavens and a new earth. It was at a time, we're at a time that religion seems to be contracting. It seems to be getting smaller. But let's with one voice say, no, no, let's let go of what obscures the light. And let's take hold of the fire that has lit the path for human beings for centuries. Jesus came to give life. He didn't come for us to shrivel up and die. He didn't come for us to shrink. He didn't come for us to retreat. He came to add life, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. If the message of God for God's people could be put in one word, it might be expand. At the very beginning of our story, God said to human beings, be, be fruitful multiply, fill the earth, expand. It was to Abraham. He said, get out of the land that you're in now and go to the land that I'll show you and I will make your name great. I will bless you and you will be the father of nations. Expand. And it was Isaiah who saw God's people, who saw us on the top of the highest mountain and he saw all nations flowing toward it. He said, the that the desert will blossom like a rose and the wilderness and the dry land shall rejoice and be glad. These are words of great expansion. And then we come to Jesus. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Go tell it to the nations, expand. And even as we read the story of that early church in Acts 1, the thing will begin in Jerusalem, and then it will expand, expand throughout Judea and to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It will just keep expanding. So today, yes, we've seen some tough times and we face great challenges, but I believe with all my heart that we're on the threshold of the greatest opportunity of our lifetime. So let's, let's give this moment our very best thinking. Let's not be lethargic or faint-hearted or even fatalistic. We're a part of a great worldwide enterprise. Let's act like it. And let's launch this great adventure over this next 50 years with renewed energy and joyous anticipation, a new start, a new beginning. We never give up. So let everyone who has ears to hear, let us hear. And everyone who has eyes to see, let us see. Amen.